elite member meeting. So it's a video analysis. If you want to see what we're doing, you probably want to head on over to YouTube. Okay, we are recording here. I'm flipping us live on YouTube. We're good on YouTube and flipping us live on Facebook. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Let's go. Um, all right. We are live on all channels. Hey, everybody. My name's Mark. This is my co-host and co-coach, Matt Hazel, and we are repping better at Beach. Today is Thursday, August 3rd. This meeting that you're about to watch or listen to is one of our elite member meetings from betteratbeach.com. That means that players sign up, they get all of our courses and programs, our skill courses, strategy courses, workout programs, uh, mobility programs and nutrition programs. And we have some coaches in here doing coach training as well. This is one of our two times per week meetings where our video, our elite members get to submit their videos and talk to us. So this is basically a one hour team meeting that we take our members through. If you guys want to take part, if you want to get your video analyzed, if you want to see giant leaps in your game, then go ahead to betterbeach.com forward slash coaching. Uh, we will be there for you. If you're just getting your feet wet and you want to see some free drills, head to our website, uh, go to the freebie section or free tools section. It's in the header and you will see a ton of free tools like our free drill book, three free workouts for vertical jump. Uh, that's like a little teaser for our vertical jump program. And, um, and a few tests to show you where you're at in terms of your skill level. We have a level two test, level three test, level four test, written tests and physical tests, like skill accomplishments that you need to get in order to be considered a better at beach level X. So that's what we have. And um, we're going to start this team meeting in a few minutes. But first, Matt, like, what's going on, man? Oh, you know, just hanging out down here in St. Pete, Florida. Uh, it's kind of humid down here. Really? Kinda, yo, when, <laughs> yeah, what game is it? Whoa. <laughs> oh, no way. Um, but yeah, whenever I was back in California, I always said I missed the humidity. Mm -hmm. Just because as soon as the sun goes down, it gets so cold out there to where I have to have a jacket 24-7. And I love the evenings where it's still warm enough to be out and about. Yes. It's nice. I like that. So you, I guess you got to choose your battles between... Would you rather it be dry heat in California and then freezing cold as soon as the sun goes down? Or would you rather it be super hot throughout the day and then as soon as the sun goes down, it's like almost perfect? Yeah. I mean, it's been for the last like two, three weeks, ever since you left, the weather in the evenings has been perfect. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess I brought the rain. I don't know. <laughs> Golly, uh, no, but we, we feel the same way. Like me and Janelle love those Florida sunsets, just yeah. staying out on the beach, looking at the ocean and saying like, yeah, it's midnight. I can still comfortably go swimming. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, but it is, yeah, that, that Florida segment, when they start their training, they're like, yeah, it's 630. Be here 630. You know, almost everybody in California would be like, you're nuts. But <laughs> yeah. if you're going past 10 a.m. in Florida in the summer, it's not practice anymore. It's survival. Yeah, it's just getting through. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you got to get no. through it. No. Yeah. Um, yeah me, and, me and Joe were actually talking about that the other day. We, uh, which he's my partner, and we were we were on our long ride home from uh, Wisconsin when we played in Wapaka, and we were just kind of having a heart to heart. You know, lose the first round, it brings out the best in people. So. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes let's all get through it and we're but leading up to that we were practicing like 10 to 12 and it was exhausting or 11 to 1 even mm. and and he was like yeah i think we need to change our practice times <laughs> so he started talking about like basically our best yes for practice times is mm -hmm. is way earlier or, or way later or one of the two but you just can't do it it, it just right. like you said it turns into I forget about volleyball. I'm just ready to get out of this heat. Find yeah, some ice you somewhere. gotta experience that humidity at yeah. some point, you know, so that you know 
what to do. It's a shame that some people, they do their two hour practice and they're like, yeah, you know, we'll practice in the humidity. I'll throw a long sleeve on or whatever, something, something ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. you know, but they, but they try to make themselves hot during the practice. But listen, that heat in that two hour practice where, you know, like 15, 20 minutes of it, it's not really going hard. It's just, uh, you warming up and getting a feel for things. Right. I don't think that prepares you for a weekend, sometimes two day tournament, yeah. right? Like yeah. your warm up usually lasts 45 minutes and you're right. going hard and then you're getting, you're getting hyped. So I, I think when football players, they do like two a days in the heat, you know, we know that, okay, there's a danger to pushing yourself too hard on the heat, obviously. However, going twice in the heat to say not to toughen up, not to, you know, prepare your body for that shock, but to train yourself for what you need to eat and drink. Yeah. You know, that's sure. the most important thing. Um, you shouldn't go into that saying, this is preparation for my body to get accustomed and my mind to increase its toughness. This is your opportunity to prepare your bag, prepare how often you're drinking, how much salt you're getting in, um, and how you're how you're able to conserve energy or recover in between those two things so it shouldn't be a separate preparation for your tournament and for your practice like if you would show up with a bag of ice to put on your neck during the tournament do that for your practice see what it takes for you to actually prepare the whole thing you know it's like a, a rehearsal for for actors like yeah. you need the same clothes you need the same timing you need the same lighting everything happens and you run through that before you have to pay the price in an early tournament loss for sure yeah i get that for sure because because then like you'll have these guys that come from all these other different places and come try to play a florida tournament and it's not so much that their body gives out it's that they didn't prepare leading up to it whether that be food and drink it, it's just like they're expecting to be able to eat the same things drink the same amount as a tournament in Nashville or like anywhere else up and down the East coast. And it just doesn't work. And it's like, you, you got to figure out a way to prepare you while using practice as that preparation to like get into the, the tournament. So that, like you said, you don't lose first round and it's like, Oh, what could we have done different? Okay. We'll take that to the next tournament. Well, if you did it before leading up to this tournament, then might as well use that for that. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's tough. Because you, there's a, it's a waste at that point, right? Like you, you're using waste it. Waste of money, waste of your entire <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah, and tournament entry fees are not cheap down here, so <laughs> you gotta make sure that you're uh, making the most of that opportunity. Yep, yep. Okay, um, I tell you, the Florida camp, the Florida mini camp, the three day, that's popping off. Oh uh, yeah, we got 24 people, so I think. I might fly out there. I've got um, I've got a little house situation. I just got a duplex. So for anybody who's oh. looking for an Airbnb in Florida, a little uh, side promotion for me. <laughs> we are I'm, I am looking for somebody to uh, sublet my apartment here in Florida during the winter or sorry in California during the winter months. and I am happy to host anybody who wants to airbnb in florida at any time we're almost done uh with our renovations there so pretty excited about that and it'll give me and janelle a place a, a little home base that we can use during camp season which uh, is going well we got those well we don't have our our christmas camp on sale yet but that's gonna be a fun one so little teaser for everybody because Christmas ran into the middle of the week, now the first day is the Tuesday is the 26th, and we don't want people having to travel uh, on Christmas. So Tuesday is the 26th. So what we're doing is you have the option of a shorter week, or we're kind of calling it like a party week, where we're only throwing one training a day and then lots of open play during the afternoon and evening and parties at night. And then uh, on Sunday... Our seven-day camp starts that next week. So there's a five-day, and then there's a seven-day, and we're giving people the option to do the short week, the five-day, 
the long week, the seven day, or do a super week with us um, where you'll get a deal to come for all 12 days. So if anybody wants 12 intense days of volleyball and hanging out with the best coaches in the land, uh, <laughs> uh, just be ready for that to go on sale. And if it's any, if the past two years have been any indication that will for sure sell out quick. Um, and then uh, we lock in our coaches quick. So we don't, we don't usually open too much after that. So get in on it. Anyway, that's what we got. Um, also, you know, I, I will give just a little bit of uh, updates for our events. August 6th, we have Intro to Beach Fundamentals in Hermosa Beach, if you guys want to come. August 9th to 11th, running a three-day kids camp. But if you just want to come for one day, get in touch with me, DM me. Uh, August 20th in Hermosa, we have Advanced Defensive Techniques and Tactics, Women's B and A. 24th to 25th, Brandon will be in Virginia Beach for a two-day clinic. And... August 25th to 27th, that's the one that is going off right now. We've got 24 people signed up, and now we have to open more spots. Luckily, we have a lot of coaches in St. Pete, so we'll be there. And then September 8th to 10th as well in St. Pete Beach, but that's women's, men's and women's A and AA. So if you guys want to get involved in any of that, bring it on. Also, if you guys are looking for work, a job, if you ever thought, man, wouldn't it be cool to work for a volleyball company? We're always looking for awesome people. Go to betteratbeach.com forward slash dream job. Betteratbeach.com forward slash dream job. Essentially, I created a whole bunch of job descriptions that I know we could use. I'm not saying that I'm ready to hire each one of those roles full time, but all of those roles would exist at the highest and best of our company. So if you think that you have number one sales skills, please get in touch online sales skills, calling sales skills. Um, we'd love to be able to get our programs out to more people. We know that everybody who joins them loves them and sees huge benefit. Uh, we're also pretty much always looking for video and podcast editors. So if you think that you have experience or you just want to go ham into being a podcast producer and be the person who is running this show behind it and chopping it up into little bits, that would be awesome. We're looking now for a full-time coach in Hermosa Beach. We need somebody who can work weekdays, weekends. It's cool that we get to employ all of these players and support their dreams, but it has become... Ah, counterproductive trying to cover everybody when it comes like to that weekend time when they want to play a tournament or they have to travel. So we are looking for a full-time coach, which means that you'll coach somewhere between three and five hours a day uh, and weekdays and weekends. And then we can find some other roles for you there. So if you want to move to the South Bay or in the South Bay and you just love the game, you've got knowledge, we can train you as a coach. We expect that you come in with a certain amount of knowledge, but uh, we'll definitely certify you and then get you that role. So if you just want to live on the beach, uh, I can't hear you, Matt. I don't know. Is it mine? No, can't hear you. Maybe you can sign out and, and sign back in, but I don't know. Okay, um, while Matt is headed out, we're going to talk to our members. So this is the start of our elite member meeting. Uh, we have them in the audience, and they have the ability to call in. So we would absolutely love for the members, guys, right now who are in the background, can you go ahead and call in? I want to hear your questions, want to review some of your film, or if you just have a question and you're here live and you're one of our elite members, you can ask that question in the chat. You can also share the link to your video so that we could sc screen share and review. <laughs> All right. Okay. All good, Julie. Um, would you like me to 
uh, look for your recent post, Julie, and we could check that out on our Facebook group. Okay, so we'll bring that up forward. So basically, guys, what are for people who don't know what's going on in this meeting, our elite members have posted their videos and the drills that we give them and some of their game scenarios to our private Facebook group. That's where we go in and we give them full video analysis. We give them exactly what we think. Okay, so Julie, your most recent post is from 54 minutes ago. So just give me a thumbs up from the chat if that works. And we'll start sharing. Um, and Pablo, good, we got you on the list, Pablo. Matt, anything yet? Nope. All right, keep checking your <laughs> keep checking your audio and I'll let you know once I hear you. And I don't think there is a way that I accidentally muted you, but we'll see. All right. So let's get into this right here. Julie, I'm about to put you on the screen. And just give me your questions. Julie, I want to know what uh, what you're actually looking for so that we can see what we want to see. Mm -hmm. Where are you? There you go. First, feedback on setting. Okay, cool. Um, and Sandy, we will review yours. That's afterwards. All right, so we're looking at uh, our setting. And which one are you here, Julie? Pink top on the far left. Cool. Got it. All right, let's go through it. And then hopefully Matt's. Sorry, guys, the background's getting a little wonky. I'm just going to open it up and do it again. Music. Great. Share. Matt, nothing? Weird. All right, so again, we are looking at Julie's setting. So she does a nice job of following that ball in. That means that she's not waiting at the net. Nice job being square to exactly where she wants to set. We love that. Same thing. Pretty good patience. And I like the exaggerated hold, Julie. You know, sitting there and pausing, you're really showing exactly where you're going and what you're doing. Those are awesome clips. Good footwork, off foot, net foot set. Okay. Let's take a look at the set right. Oh, give me a second here. Okay, so this set you missed about by about two feet. Now, your hitter here stayed really narrow. So if I were your hitter and I had that exact same pass right here, what we tell our, our, our campers is here's just like a basic thing that you want to do. If you're a right-handed player and you're on the left side, before you hit, you should get 10 feet of width from your setter. Now, that's not 10 feet of total distance. I'm just saying when we can only talk about width, we should create a window that's about 10 feet wide so that there's a lot of space for your right arm. When we see this set happening here and it's on repeat, okay, you only had maybe three or four feet to be able to set her right arm. So you miss this set. Right? You missed it by about two feet, but your partner didn't create a big window. And if I pass in front of me, I want to make sure that I get outside. I create 10 feet of width when I'm that right-handed left side player. And then I can 
get more balls on my right. You know, it would be tough for her to hit power cross here. So she was almost led into that little high line and uh, she just dinked it right in front of that person. So missed that set just a little bit, Julie. And, oh, shoot. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello? Now you can hear me. Gosh. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you, yeah. We did it. All right, well, something happened. Nice. Oh, sorry, Julie. All right, let's start that over again. Okay. So what I was saying here, Julie, was that um, your partner, if they're, a, if they're a left side, they should be trying as a base, a baseline, they should be trying to get 10 feet of width from you. Okay. So 10 feet of width, that means that they're not trying to get 10 feet of complete space, but they're actually trying to get, if we talk about one dimension, you want 10 feet of width from your partner. And she didn't do that. So it wasn't the most helpful, but she had some space. So there's that small little four foot window that you needed to hit her right, her right hand. And you missed it by about two feet. So we tossed that ball just over her left shoulder and put her in trouble. Okay. So, um, you got to keep that ball a little bit skinnier. I know that it was tight. You were struggling, but just location wise, we barely missed. And now Julie with the last one. Oh boy. All right. Slippery, slippery noodles. Uh huh. You know, you had early preparation. You were a little bit under the ball. Okay. I, there's no problem here technically. I think you just missed, you know? So this just becomes a rep thing. Uh, don't let this one ball get in your head and keep using those hands. I love that you're hand setting consistently. All right, and here's an attack from you. So she missed your right arm as well. So if we see this play here, your partner put this ball on your left shoulder. Watch this. She needed to push that out a bit to your right shoulder, right? She kind of led your left shoulder. It's the setter's job there to get the ball nice and up and over the right shoulder. However, the reason that you're able to do this pretty well and still get yourself to the ball is when we talked with Mike um, on Tuesday, right? He hid his left hip from the ball. You kept your hips open to the set and you're able to come forward and attack that athletically. So I'd say the shape of your feet, where your toes are pointing for this set, you did a good job there of counteracting an inside set, a set that was too far inside. You were able to close it fairly nicely and, and get a good piece on that. So uh, Julie, look solid. And I want to take a look at just a couple of your other films here. I think there is one more. Is this? No. Okay, yeah. All right, I like this. I like being able to analyze our slow motion. So this is an example for all of you who are watching or listening at home or watching Julie's sets uh, that she is doing from our, from our drills that we give her in our 30-day setting course. Okay, so if we check out the slow motion, this is what I like to see right here. Good preparation. Good early ball shape. Yeah, this is nice. Able to use the fingers nice. Thumbs retreat just a little bit. I don't know. Matt, do you think those thumbs are a little pointy? Let me watch it one more time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think you Maybe might be... You might yeah, be think... catching this a little high, right? Like in her fingertips yeah. instead of in that pocket. Yeah. I I can't be a bigger fan of DJ's praying hands analogy. Mm. Couldn't be a bigger hand, fan of that. Uh, and then a, an addition to that is not necessarily like ha starting praying hands here, but having your middle finger point to your nose. Uh, I've realized that helps people out a lot too. It's helped me out oh, a lot. Oh, middle finger <laughs> point to nose when you set? Yeah. I like that. And then it just creates the basket shape as soon as you open it. 
So it's basically just like catching a ball in your basket, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, going super slow motion. Okay, thank you for giving us all these angles. Yeah, so it yeah, looked perfect. to me, it looks like we're really internally, um, internally rotated right here, yeah. and that ball's falling off of your hands. And now I can see why you might have missed that set in the game because it rolled off of the top of your fingers. Mm. So I think we should catch this ball a little bit wider, make sure that it sits in the pocket between us. And I would like to see what happens if Julie, I, I want you to just try this drill for a little bit. Okay. Um, I want you to try to set and send us some video in the Facebook group with you only setting. And I'm not telling you to do this in the match. Anybody at home, I'm not telling you to do this. <laughs> this is an individual <laughs> fix for an individual player where I'd like to see what happens. Okay. Use your four fingers and thumbs and see if you could only set with that and set clean. Because right now I think your fingers are ending up doing this like little bunny ear type thing because the ball's landing really high because of the way your thumbs are shaped. They're pointed up and they're high. If we can turn it just a little bit so that our thumbs rotate a little bit down or, you know, we do get that middle finger pointing to our nose. I think that'll help with your catch and you'll end up having more control. So I want you at home um, and film it for a little bit, but I, I really want you to try Julie setting with your thumbs and forefingers to see if you can get equal charge out of your thumbs and forefingers. Don't want to see you setting like this. We want to see you setting here. Okay. So Julie, uh, just let us know if that makes sense. I just think that you're catching that ball too high in your hands and your wrists are flopping over as if you're shooting a basketball. And I'd like to see some more internal rotation and that catch for the set just be right here. I also I also love the the setting drill with the football in there as well. Uh, it's in our setting course that could potentially help with this too. Oh yeah. Um, so Matt's saying that football drill basically if you throw a football with yourself uh, um, to yourself with spin, just catch the ball so that the cone falls in your hands and see if that feeling gets you. Yeah, if you can set or catch a football so the cone fits perfectly through your hands that's what we want to do for uh for setting as well all right julie hope that helps nice okay so we're gonna look at our next one pablo i know you're calling in i'm trying to look through the chat but it keeps doing weird stuff okay <laughs> Yeah, mine keeps scrolling to the top. Weird. Okay, guys, if you want to talk, uh, call in and uh, make sure that you refresh. Give me another chat at the bottom of that thing. Pablo. Oh, Sandy. Pablo, you're after Sandy. Sandy, we're going to go in here. Sandy, could you call in? Do you have a chance? Waiting on you. Mark, have you met Sandy before? I think maybe she is awesome. It's a like, big maybe. <laughs> super cool. She <laughs> she's a very big learner. Uh, just loves to soak up everything and just fun to talk to you too. So hopefully she can call in. Yeah, she is. Let's go. Okay, Pablo, I'm gonna put you on hold. Uh, Sandy, once your once we see your call come in, we're gonna add you to that call. But I'm not seeing it pop up. She said she pressed the button. All right, Riverside, we got some complaints. Hmm. The phone is jumping, but we don't see you. Matt, do you see her? I do not. Try again. Try clicking X and then doing it again. Oh, I see it. Here we go. Sandy, boom. Look at that. There's a whole list. Yuck. I don't like that. Hi, Sandy. Thanks. Thanks for being patient. Hello. What's up, Sandy? Hi. I'm um, playing grass the past weekend and the next weekend. So 
Gotcha. <laughs> It's grass, sorry. But uh, I'm playing San on Phil. So. We have so many people that keep asking us to make grass videos. Um, and I will just say this, everybody. <laughs> it's the same as beach. Like the guys <laughs> who are winning grass tournaments are the best beach players. Yes, I got beat up on the same players a lot in grass. <laughs> it's, and, yeah, yeah, we... Like we don't have to play for the whole year, right? But be <laughs> now it's like we've just played on a small court. It's it's the same simulation as like futsal in Brazil. Like the guys yeah. who grow up on those tiny little concrete courts where there's five people and there's no room to maneuver, those are the best players when they get to the big field because yeah. they have there's no nerves because of how much extra space they have. Like everything so. aim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every shot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, Sandy, what's your question? So this two minutes of video is all about my slow receiving and my hitting. So I'm five six and I'm working on my side out right because most of the time my partner is taller than me, so people just serve me right away. So I just want to see if I can adjust uh, like the timing when I go into hit mm -hmm. and if it's like offset, like as a small player. Like I lost my vision. What can I do? Stuff like that. Okay. Um, and when people peel, so it's it's like quick clips for two minutes, so you can just like kind of like watch. Yeah. All right. Solid passing. You know, I like I like your distancing. Here's what I'm not really a fan of, and this is this is a perfect example of where it goes wrong. Okay. Um. So I will say that the sets that you've gotten so far have been on, off, on, off. Uh, if we were to coach your partner, you see how her hands blow up right here and her hands just throw super high and they separate. Uh, yeah. That's going to create a lot of inconsistency. So if you're not really building your platform early and holding the finish, a lot of sets like this are going to continue to happen, you know, where she accidentally puts you at half court. Okay. But this jog approach that you have where you, you take smaller steps. So in a way you slow your lateral speed, but your feet never calm down. So when you see a set like this, everything you have to stop and you have to move backwards because you're in a jog pattern. I want to see for that first right step of an approach, that should be a, an absolute walk phase. Yeah. You know, not this jog, 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 jog. Okay. Now I have to stop, right? You're not going to allow yourself to truly accelerate into a ball when you need to. Okay. That's... Same thing there, right? Yeah. So you're running through this. You need to get to a point where you pass high enough. In in grass, everyone needs to pass higher. Oh. This is it's just crazy to me that you have big courts that the set is the only thing that matters and everybody just passes these tiny balls and everything becomes rushed. Okay. This girl's okay. approach is pretty good on the right because she's got nice slow feet. Yeah, so you're jogging away from your partner during this. Let's see it again. Okay, so you're jogging away here, and then you have to cut back in. So it's as if you were anticipating where a set might be instead of, <laughs> instead of hoping that a set gets there, but preparing your body to hit any ball. Does that make sense at all? When I say it um, like that, I like it's, the question will be, I don't, yeah, like you say, but I don't, I'm not sure. I think I was jogging because I feel like I'm really far away from the net, but I was like, I'm not sure if she's going to set me close, like a tight ball or it will be an off ball. Mm. Um, so I feel like if I start to walk, like, I'm not sure if I need to like maybe go to steps before I, I start my first step. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know like the distance between me and the set, the ball. Okay. Watch, watch her, uh, on this last one. Let's 
Thank you, Facebook, for showing random stuff. <laughs> okay. This this last little bit. So I'm going to play this here. No, we're not printing that. Watch how calm this attacker is here. Is this you? Uh, the gray shirt? That's yep. me. Yeah. This was your best approach. Watch. Pass. Walk. See that? Now you have that same offset. But your whole body is able to move forward. There's never a break pattern. <clears throat> you only continue moving forward. Okay. I'm going to play it one more time. This mm -hmm. is really calm feet. So if you compare this approach, the feet that you have beforehand, to all of your other ones, uh -huh. all of the others, your feet just keep dancing, 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 dancing. You're kind of jogging in one area. Here, on this approach, you put your feet down. And it, you're not, your body doesn't anticipate one direction or another, right? It just walks, where's the ball? There it is, now I go hit it. All of the others, you were jogging in one direction, uh -huh. and then you had to stop your jog, which is harder on your body athletically, and you're slower to change direction, like that. Yeah, like I will stop, and it just stopped the momentum too. Yep. So you're going on her set, hoping it's getting somewhere instead of where is the ball? Let me take four strong steps to the ball. Oh. Um, she did it too. So your partner just did it here, right? This jog through this approach, mm -hmm. right? She's not, she's already moving in a direction, but she doesn't even know where the ball is yet. And this is very similar to what we were talking about with Mike. Um, similar but but different <laughs> okay you see that cha 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 there's never an opportunity for you to truly accelerate on your last two steps you're actually breaking uh-huh jog, yeah. jog 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 break see that yes that is really helpful actually hey mark yeah do you think it it could go to say this is good we could treat we could treat the net and our body as like two negative sides of a magnet as we pass this ball we can't really approach yet and then as soon as the ball is set that's when it becomes a becomes a negative and a positive and then we can attack oh that's funny yeah. maybe that's a way to think about it i don't know yeah yeah that's uh, like that's... i can't approach can't approach can't approach these magnets don't fit together and then boom the set happens negative and positive attack mm -hmm. so maybe i should wait for the set come off the hand maybe like one foot stuff like that and start doing my approach yeah i would so here's how i would start you like if we if we were in person here the way that i would start you is i would make you put your heel and then your toe on your right step and your left step the first and second step the first and second step so when you jog here, toe, 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 you see that? Yes. There's never a slow to fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would switch you and I would say, okay, for a little bit in practice here, let's see what happens if on your first step, your right step and your second step, you had a heel toe motion. Okay. That tells your body like, hey, this is a walk phase, not a run phase, not a jog phase. Then we grab the sand with our left foot um, and we take our step close to the ball. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to try. Yep. What I'd like you to really watch is see if you can pull up Pottstown finals. If you happen to see one of my matches, totally fine. I actually yeah. hey watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That is awesome. I, won't, I forgot which game, but I already serve you. I already serve you a partner. Um. Like, I forgot it, which is here, but you didn't get any surf, so. Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> annoying to play against in pots down because I just I just shoot. I use ultimate vision. I never try to hit hard unless it's from the service line. Um, but it hasn't been too successful in the last two, three years because I used to win a whole lot, but, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but watch the men's finals and watch high passes okay. and then see how these guys walk for their approaches 
Okay. And just notice the difference of how much time they're spending um they're spending on their first two steps and that they're tall and that they're very relaxed for the beginning of the approach and then they accelerate. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like they're sleeping for the first two steps of the approach. Mm -hmm. So if you could cut out that jog pattern um, and you could ask your partner to hold her finish and really exaggerate holding and then at the peak of the set, then she lets go of her hands, that'll be better. Okay, well, I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Um, but just walk. Okay. See the ball, then go. So for the timing, when I walk in the first step, it depends on the set too, right? If it's a high set, so probably when the ball is off the hand. No, because no approach is the same. Ugh. Is the same speed. Got it. So saying that, like your timing from the set contact into your hit, that's it's not really possible. Okay. okay. What we want, what we want to ensure by making you walk for the first two steps is that you can accelerate at the end when it matters and that you never have to break and reverse. Okay. Oh. We want to be small and slow in the beginning so that we can always go forward and fast at the end. But if you, if you get big in the beginning, that means that you like take a giant right and a giant left and you get too far into the net before your step close. Well, then you've taken up a lot of space where if there's an offset, now you have to jump backwards. Got it. That's why we like to be have small steps in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then speed, really, the last two steps are, are the only ones that matter. Mm -hmm. It's easier to make them faster if you generate momentum. But then if you have any sort of set that isn't perfect and you just go, you're not going to connect. You're going to have to, again, break, hit balls behind you. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. Um, yeah, I don't think I noticed that before. I know I'm jogging, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna try. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Um, you could watch the same phenomenon, but with speed sets. If you watch indoor men's, like I'm sure in indoor women's as well, but when you see the calm, slow, intentional feet just grabbing the ground instead of bounce, 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 bounce. Right, it's way harder to time when you have that kind of trotting approach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Walk for the first two steps, see the set, then go after it. That's that's the advice. Okay. Thanks. It's All right, Sandy. Way. Yep. Cool. Thanks for the call. And um, once you get kicked out here, just join the meeting right again. So it kicks you out of the full meeting, but you just join again, and then you're Click back. Click the link, right? Click the Riverside link. Yep. Okay. Cool. Should I leave? Bye. Um, I'll kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Austin, here we go. Let's go. What's up, Austin? There you are. How you doing? Great. Great. <laughs> Love that. Uh, it looks a little dark in your room, man. Where are you? Uh, it's, I'm in. I'm in the office. I'm in just like a huddle room. It's the only uh, light in here. I won't tell. <laughs> Uh, what's been going on with your game and what do you want to look at today? Um, you know, I've been working on a number of different things, but, uh, the thing that I've wanted to take a look at today is kind of my defensive positioning. Okay. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a little different because the way that we play COVID doubles is a lot different than say the tournament I'm playing Saturday morning. Mm-hmm which I will be doing a little bit of both defense and blocking, but really just kind of trying to fix what I can now um, to try to get these, what I feel like should be very easy digs, but I shank, I'm pretty sure every single one of them. Okay. And this is you back here. Uh, so you uh, yes, clipped but, uh, out all these defensive right That's Nice. Matt, what do you see? Sorry, I was distracted. My phone's on like 10%. I had to switch over to it. Okay. Um, let me watch it. Austin. Watch it. It's a positioning, right? Yeah, but it's... So, Austin, I wouldn't say that it's positioning. So, okay, here, here's the thing about defense. People teach you 
where your hands should start. They're usually like, yeah, get your hands in front of you and, and just put your palms up, right? Like hands a little bit apart. That's the best basic defense you could ask for. But very quickly, you have to increase, you know, your IQ and your ability here. So look at this swing. You had a guy who had to basically stop his approach. He's under the ball. He's a little bit off. There's no more chance for him to hit steep. So where are your hands positioned? Down by my knees. Right. So you have a ball where it's pretty impossible for this guy to hit so steep that it would hit your forearms down low. But you didn't alter where your hands go. So your hands, when you play defense or your platform, if you need it, needs to prepare in the most likely spot. If, especially here, look, um, you, so you came forward, you're running at the net, but your hands were still down, right? If, if you're running at the net, your hands should be in front of you and active here on this play, right? So your hands are hanging out by your pockets as you're pursuing the ball, but you got that tight set. So what I would say is that you have to start getting your hands to be attracted to the ball and framing your dig before somebody hits. Now, if somebody's, he's tight there, so this is a good positioning, right? He's tight, he's on the net, so you left your hands out and low. I'm fine with that. Later, right at the end, you try to, yeah, no, this is, this is a good positioning, okay? The other ones, it, it looks like you're putting your hands in the exact same position every time instead of seeing where the ball could go. Like, look at this. There is no way he could hit fast at your forearms here. And you see where your hands are? They're down low. Does that make sense? Yeah, a lot. So I, your positioning is, is perfect because you're able to get to to get a hand on all of these balls. I would say the only thing that's happening that you can improve is, all right, where's the ball? If it's up close to the net and I'm, and I'm close to the net and this guy is not getting it on top of it, my hands start to rise. This is the most likely thing. Um, if this guy's on top of the ball and I'm kind of deep or I'm behind half court and he's over the net, yeah, all right, my forearms end up down low. Right. But your defensive forearms and defensive hands, they're not being attracted to the ball right now. So every move or most moves here, you're making macro moves with your arms after the hit. And that costs time. And that's why you're not getting those clean touches. So when you look at pros playing defense, it looks like they didn't move for digs. You're just like, that dude just stood there, did nothing, and he got you know, he, he dug the hardest ball possible. Um, instead, what they're, sorry, not instead, but what they're doing is they're doing all of their preparation first. So you have to start looking at what's, what angles are available to the hitter and then putting your hands or your platform there. And you know how much we do this in camp, right? Like if you're peeling, how many people on your court dropped their hands and started building their forearms when they're peeling from the net. It's such a bad habit. You're peeling from the net because you don't believe this person can hit down hard fast. Yet everybody peels and they hold their hands right in front of their crotch and they get all tight instead of having them up here because the only thing that's going to happen fast is going to come high and at your head. So that should be your first level of preparation. So that's your positioning is fine. If you keep getting touched, you know, if you keep getting limbs on the ball, keep staying where you're staying. But uh, as far as what your hands are doing and what your forearms are doing, they need to start studying a little bit more. So here's a drill that I'll give you. Play hands pepper. So the next time you pepper with your partner nothing but hand contacts you cannot let it touch your forearms 
that will maybe start getting you into the sense of, okay, you know, if I'm close to him and he's really high, I'm going to leave my hands here right away. Okay. If I'm a little bit far from him, now my hands have to be lower. I'll start doing weird gator shapes. Uh, but I want to get you out of the automation of dropping your hands, putting your palms up in front of you, because that's something that we give to everybody as a baseline when they haven't seen enough reps, but you've seen enough volleyball now. So now you need to progress to the next stage and it's got to be right here. It's like same as boxers. Like your hands aren't down here to parry punches, right? Like you're staying up here. So, because that's where the, the fastest thing is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, love what, I love what you said about making your hands attracted to the ball. Like that was something that just hit me. I was like, wait, whenever I'm in defense, there's so many balls that just fly right by me and I don't do anything. Uh, and so just like the idea of being attracted to the ball, to the ball. I don't know why that just hit me pretty hard. Yeah. All right, Austin. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I'll definitely give that a shot. Um, yeah, I can see how that goes tonight. Uh, play a pretty similar opponent. So, okay. If they're similar, then I, d I didn't see you get hit by any jumbos there. Right. So, that means that if I'm going to give you a cheat code for tonight, you'd play like uh, the Brazilian female defense where they're stepping up, they stay at half court and their hands are just prepped right here. If you could check out some uh, like Brazilian championships uh, from some ladies matches today, just, just see a few points. And when they step in the pocket, they actually come a little bit closer to the net and they really like to play with their hands. Okay. Same thing. We've got a bunch of great, uh, peel diggers like uh, Kelly Clay's, uh, what's her name? Alex Kleiman got really good at it a few years ago, but it was that shift of I'm peeling, so my hands just stay here doing this magic, not dropping in, which means you don't need to be at three quarters depth if you could just love using your hands and getting those paddles ready. Yeah, and I've been watching a lot of Kyle Friend as well from feedback in our previous meetings, and I think pretty similar feedback uh, as you just gave right there oh he's so legit at peeling uh bill kolinsky uh pretty masterful peeling and, and you can see just very very present hands one other coach that just for parting words he said use the net as a force field so that the ball like you can only go up from the level of the net if you look at where the ball is and you look at the height of the net you want to position your hands or platform so that it can only go up from there. That means that if he can't, because of how high he is, if he can't hit under the net, I wouldn't leave my hands down here. I wouldn't leave my forearms down here, right? I would, all right, here's my starting point, that level of the net and the angle of the ball. Now I position from there, and that's my baseline. And then I can go up from there. Okay, so... Yeah. Wherever that angle hits, you know, um, or wherever that ball is, or that I know this doesn't make sense on a camera, but you get it. Yeah, I can visualize it. <laughs> yeah, like you said, I've seen enough volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Austin. Awesome. Uh, next caller, we have I think Adeli. Yep. Hi guys. Hi Ellie. Ellie, what's Ellie. up? <laughs> it's okay, what's Mark. We've only met like twice. Gosh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well. How are you guys? Um, awesome. Good. That's yes. good. I'm trying to find my charger because, of course, when it's my turn, no, <laughs> it's okay. relatable. Um, yeah. Are Are we looking at some film, or do you just have a question? <laughs> Not film today, um, just a question. Okay. I, so like a month ago, I think. So I just finished another semester of school. Um, yay. Yeah, yay. Eh, still two more years, so I don't feel very accomplished. But yes, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but because of that, I took about two or three weeks off. I don't remember, Matt, from like the calls and stuff. Um, and it wasn't supposed to be 
really a break from workouts either. Like I was supposed to keep going with that, but just not necessarily be very present, like on the Facebook page and in the calls. But then I had some health stuff go on that's still kind of going on mentally and physically that have slowed me down on my track of like following the program. And I was in the 60 day max vert program. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of been stuck in between week three and week four for like the past month. And I'm like, I've gotten back into it. I've exercised and worked out every day so far this week. And today I'm doing my last like leg workout from week four. So like the high, high, Hypertrophy. Hypertrophy. Yeah. Thank you. Hypertrophy. A little bit of hypertrophy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a short phase. Like really, I mean, over time, if we're right. talking about hypertrophy and you wanted your muscles to grow, that's the rep range you would be in. But mm -hmm. for our purposes, it just creates a little bit of extra stamina so that your technique stays quality. And that's why those weeks are in there. But if, you know, if you ever wanted to elongate that phase with the higher reps, to yeah. say, you know what, I really actually need to, to put on some muscle here. Um, well, and that would be kind of what you. I've been doing. I think okay. because I've been in that stage, like it's been kind of on and off. Um, I've ran out of a medication. I have like hyperthyroidism. So my body's mm. not like taking care of the food and the nutrients. So days I'm like super drowsy. Like I will sleep for 10 hours throughout the day and I'll wake up still exhausted. So I just That's am right. not working out. Um, but so I've been in that, that phase for about a month. So, but like on and off. So I'm kind of wondering um, if you think like try and get into week five or maybe stay in week four until things are consistent. I don't know. That's like my question. Like, where should I go from here? The way we built that program is to introduce people to all the rep ranges from beginning to end and to take most beginners and say, okay, let's do this. If you've gotten some consistency of working out, so let's say that like you've worked out at least once a week during this phase, your body is prepped. You're able to go to the max strength and the explosive phase. Mm -hmm. uh, if, like for me, if I take a long time off or I've got an injury, I need to reestablish my technique and my motor patterns. So that's when I choose a little bit of lower weight and higher reps um, or lower weight and I'll go extremely slow. You know, there's something like that people call the, the 10 second rep. Basically you take 10 seconds to get down, 10 seconds to go up. And if you move that slow, you really start exploring where your imbalance is and where your body kind of skips through um, a faulty motor pattern. So you could do it like that with ten second, a 10-second rep, or you could do it with increased repetitions. And there's benefits to both. But I'll just say that that hypertrophy or higher reps for volleyball players are usually rehab or preparation style because not a lot of volleyball players have to pack on muscle. And the speed at which you can do it and the amount of reps isn't necessarily designed to make you faster, more explosive, which most volleyball players need. So that's why we spend a really short amount of time of that in our program. And mm -hmm. then we move you on to jumps, lower reps, higher weight. If your body's prepped, that means that you've at least worked out once a week and you trust your motor patterns, mm -hmm. right? And you trust your technique, then we go heavier. All right. Okay, you go heavier, you go faster, so long as that technique is there. But that, in this program, the, the one that, that you guys are taking, that's what those weeks are there for, to prepare you to say, okay, body, we're going to be lifting 85% or more of what we can possibly lift. So we need to be prepared to make sure that our technique doesn't falter here. Okay. Is that a... Cool. Um, good way to explain how that program works yeah i think so and that if i'm understanding correctly like once i feel confident that i am like my technique my form won't waver when i start moving up in weight then i'm good to move on to week five and to get strong and hit max strength yeah and cool. you know soreness is also going to come into play too 
Yeah, I actually weirdly love that feeling. So cool. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> hey yo. Well, that's that's good and bad. Um, if you if you love being sore, it, we don't want to train sore. You know, like right. so. If if those workouts with lighter weight are still destroying you, and you feel mm-hmm. like, oh my god, it takes me four days to recover. Oh, no. Well, imagine what's going to happen to your body when you're now lifting real weight. Yeah. Right. So. Um, you also want to do that. And, and we, we do space those workouts enough. You should have mm-hmm. two minimum two days between your, your leg days uh, yep. to say you're recovered. If you need an extra day, I would just add the extra day. And even if you don't stick within the week programs that we give you, just say, mm-hmm. all right, that got pushed back. Now my quote unquote week starts on Tuesday next week instead of Monday. And that's how I carry the program forward. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And then Adelie, when is your um, club season starting? So I play, um, Mark, I play indoor and we start at USF. Our club starts August 28th. Around that time, we'll be having our tryouts and stuff. Um, and I'm the VP of our club, so I'll be busy a lot with that. But then I also do the beach club at USF. Um, and I'll be trying out for that around the same time. Nice. So like end of August. So I, so I think a good question to consider would be like priming wise leading up to that. Mark, what do you think is a a good idea for her leading up to that weight training wise? Do you think it's smart to start speeding up that process of like, hey, maybe we need to move away from like the slow loads, uh, try to try to build that a little faster. What are your thoughts on that, knowing that her season is, like, just around the corner? Yeah, whatever you do, uh, if you're preparing for an event, Mm -hmm. you should know, and this is, like, when you're taking notes in your journal, you should know after each day uh, what, what was really hard for you. And then the next two days, just start keeping track of your mind. Ideally, you know, use a journal or something, and you track how you're feeling the next day, but you have to know what leaves you the most exhausted. Okay. okay. Because there's, there's a big difference. Like your essential nervous system can become exhausted. And some people, when they do speed bursts, that makes them more tired than if they lift heavy. Some people, if they lift heavy, it's like super easy. Um, some people, they lift heavy, they're destroyed for four days. Okay. So your job is to start exploring that. But if you have an event and it's the event that is super important, I mean, at least four or five days before that, don't do any more lifts. Okay. You know, um, that's fine. If the night before or the morning of you want to load your central nervous system um, or precondition it to be fast, you can do like four sets of one extremely fast okay or very heavy but no more like absolutely no more and if you're not really accustomed to that uh then then i wouldn't do it but you have to have max speed in that moment Uh, and what i do is instead of actually like lifting a weight there i will just get five or six jumps off of a very high platform with a perfect landing and that the ability, the necessity for your body to stop all of that inertia in that moment and lock you into a quarter squat that sells. That is the same thing as speed production because you're making your muscles contract instantly to stop all of this force, which means that you're creating all of that force. So an eccentric landing from a high place can tell your muscles like, hey, this is higher than we would ever have to produce force. So now you've loaded them and you said, like, we put you <laughs> at a new level of acceptance. And elite bench press people and, and squat people like power lifters, they do this by holding a weight in their bench press that is like 120 or 115 of what they could possibly bench press, but they just hold it so that all of their stabilizers are fully recruited And then five minutes later, they come back and they do their reps. So through power lifters and Olympic lifters, uh, we can learn some things as well. 
but that's right. diving really deep into that. Your absolute number one is maximum recovery for the event that you love. And so that's, I mean, at, at the least four days of rest from sprinting plyos lifting. Okay. Yeah. And maybe that's something you can experiment with, with your, with an upcoming training session that you have mm -hmm. next week, say, Hey, the day before slash morning of, I'm going to go and do maybe four sets of one of heavy squats or fast squats. Uh, and just see like, what is your body? Be a huge feeler, right? Like study what you're feeling, write it down, take note of it. And then that'll be a good time of, wait, this is actually something really good that I could do right before a tournament. That's mm -hmm. awesome. You know, so just take note of that. Try to experiment with that. Similar to the heat, you know, you got to know what you need. Uh, same with your body. You got to know what primes you best for that tournament. So use use practice as a as an experiment for that yeah. to okay. see weight training wise what you should be doing. I love that, Matt. So, cool. um, if if I were to design or, or spoon feed it, I would say jump test. Right do a jump test and do a speed test that we give you in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just one of each after a good warm up. then do three or four sets of one at something heavy with flawless technique. If you're tech, if there's any question about wobble or like a little back hinge at the end, you don't move up that weight. You don't go heavy, yeah. but if you're, if yeah. your technique's flawless um, and keep posting so that we can keep helping you out. Uh, mm -hmm. Then after that, the next day, retest, warm up, retest. If your numbers are the same or higher, cool. If their numbers are lower, you know, like, mm, I don't think this is working for me, so I'm going to lay off of it. So basically, you have a, a two-day test, right? Okay. You test, and then you throw in some maxes, uh, and then the very next day, you see what that did to your body. Okay. Like that. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, we got, we only got time for one more call. Uh, I got to run. So we, Pablo, you are in line. Adelie, thanks for the call, girl. Yeah. Thanks, we'll yeah. see you in the group. Bye. Bye. Hello. Oh, we sir. got two at one time. <laughs> oh. I think you'll have to kick That's, me off. Yeah. But, um, Riverside is doing new things. You know, I got five more minutes, so I'm going to let the other guys in as well, Plinio and Mike, and we'll see if we can run through some questions real quick at the end of this. Nice. Okay. Um, here we go, Plinio and Mike. Okay, just guys, make sure that your backgrounds are pretty quiet. Pablo, you're up first. What's up? I uh, just had some field review if we have time. Otherwise, yeah, no okay. questions here. Uh, what are we exactly looking for? I've um, been trying to work on being more aggressive on my approach. Uh, so being more patient after I pass, kind of like standing up, waiting, and then trying to be explosive on my last two steps. Okay. So I'm trying to get as much height as I can so I can actually swing and not worry about hitting the ball out. Oh, yeah. I did see this post. <clears throat> um, here's what I want to say. You know, even though you're taking a goofy foot approach, I you're standing up tall yeah. and almost leaning backwards. Oh, yeah. So... While this is good if you're training somebody to be really patient for the approach, you actually don't have the ability to accelerate. Like imagine a sprinter, right? He wouldn't just stand up as tall as he could at the starting blocks. So this is really good patience, and Sandy could learn from this for her, for her grass approach for sure, right? Because you have very nice walking feet. But at no point do your shoulders get forward, which is the point where you're able to accelerate and go pop, pop. Right. Okay. That's so gotcha. I would say, I you get, now. just get that without running forward, get that mm -hmm. athletic lean as if you're, you could start a race. That makes sense. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was looking at this uh, a second ago. Uh, and I was just like, man, he's standing up real tall, and I don't know if he's able to accelerate from there. I like, I like trying to think about falling into that first step, like wait, wait, wait to step, and then all of a sudden you just kind of fall into that first step rather than 
I'm going to initiate this step from my legs. It's like yeah. my momentum is falling forward. So I stand up tall waiting on that. And then I just kind of fall into the step again. And that creates that, that chest still up, but kind of lean forward just a bit to create that momentum. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something you could experiment with too. Yeah. yeah so just, I mean, I, I know we only looked at a couple clips of that Pablo, but from what I saw when I was looking at it before was you're just, your shoulders are super back. So now you're going to try to pull yourself. You can accelerate by using your toes. So I'd just say, get a little hunch and see if you can be more ready to accelerate. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So next time we'll see your shoulders drop a little bit lower and there should be an obvious difference uh, in that yeah. film. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Pablo. Uh, Mike, what's up? Hey, I know you got to run. Appreciate you taking this one. I uh, just want to clarify um, your comment about toes and hips to the, to the ball versus deep middle. Can you explain why you uh, like the ball better? Because that's what it'll be in the end. Yeah. Like if, if I tell you to put your hips and toes towards the middle of the court, but then yeah. your set falls on the left quarter and now yeah. you're just struggling to get your hips and toes facing the, the back middle, then I've given you like a halfway answer. This is why I like setters when they teach setters and they're like square up to the antenna. Yeah, that's like a 70% answer. But if you just <laughs> always face the antenna, <laughs> you might not be facing anywhere that you would want to set. Because the end goal, the real goal, is yeah. to face where you set, right? Like basketball players try to score up to the hoop when they shoot to be as consistent as possible. That's what we should do as setters. The antenna, when you face there, it just happens to be that most of the time that angle works out so that the proper set is on the way to the antenna. But if you're locked on the antenna completely, then you're not facing where you want to set in every occasion. So that's like a, all right, that'll get you 75% of the way. And it's easy for you to find a physical location and say, that's where I have to face. Instead of telling somebody brand new, face where exactly where you want to set. Brand new players don't know exactly where they want to set. So we tell them, just face the antenna, dude. You know? <laughs> it, and it decomplicates that, that conversation. So when you're talking about you're attacking, that's why I gave you, okay, here's your starter feed. Like, let's aim your feet a little bit more towards middle and instead of running outside the court towards the antenna when you're attacking as a right side. But uh, in the end, you just your hips have to be open to the set and your hips and your chest go at the set. So then you're attacking the set. Cool. And like we said, uh, the set's not coming to you. It gets laid up, you go have dinner. Got it. So even, even if the pass drifts a little bit to my left, I should still be looking towards my setter, not just at the pin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Right. Plinio, last question of the day. What do you got, brother? Uh, now the only question is about, can you hear me right? Can yep. you hear me? Yep. OK. The only question is about the Russian twist. Yeah. That I usually in the past, and I'm very like uh, old fashioned on that. I used to do my sit ups like the old fashioned way, but in a bench. A little bit decline. Mm -hmm. And when I get to the top, then I twist to each, each side mm -hmm. and keep doing the, the, the sit ups. The same for the back. I go to a bench, I lean like completely down when I get up and I'm straight. Can I do that instead of the Russian uh, twist with the medicine ball or? The Russian twists are in the, in the program to promote getting your shoulders as far sideways from your hips as possible. So mm -hmm. we're trying to separate those. So when we do it from a forward crunch position, then we only get here. If I do it when I'm back, then I can get more range. So I wouldn't be doing it in the form of a crunch. I'd be trying to make sure that your hips and your shoulders have 90 degrees of separation. Another exercise that you could do instead of Russian twists with a medicine ball is you could just lie on your back, put your arms out, and rock your knees 
from sides to side, or if you're strong, straighten your legs, and now your legs will just go thump, thump, thump. And that's another way to do Russian twists, um, but your bottom half would be moving instead of your top half. But it's okay. there so that we get range and shoulder separation from your hips. So if you cheat that by just doing this, instead of really opening it up, then we're not getting the, the benefit the full yeah. attack benefit out of it. Oh, oh, that's that's the that's the thing because usually when I do, I try to uh, simulate if as if I'm like opening and changing sides like on a hit. So I don't do it like a uh, like very narrow. I tend to face completely, like open up completely, then twist to the other side, and I do it not like super quick. I do it so I can open up and I've been doing that all the time, but it gets me like doing with the medical twist is driving mm -hmm. me crazy. I cannot get my feet long enough, like to do three or four. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't, well, maybe when I get the, the, the vibe yeah. and I can do it like a more, a consistent and without stopping i think that i that it's gonna be good but right now i'm trying and i'm like ah. <laughs> <laughs> well good um good but uh, yeah i know it's tough uh yeah. so well i'll i'll show you a few variations of twists that you can do but the important part about that is that we are creating um space we're, we're okay. using mobility and then generating power like we do that with the scoop tosses as well uh generating that torque power that rotation so there's a bunch of ways that we can do it we can do it with bands we can do it with cables we can do it on the floor we can do it on a medicine ball um and i'll get as many clips together from youtube as i can and i'll just post them all those variations for you and you can see which one you like it doesn't okay. have to be russian twist it could just be any version of a rotational exercise where your shoulders separate from your hips. And okay. there's a lot of ways to accomplish that. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, I have to run. Uh, really appreciate the meeting. Thank you for coming. We're going to see you guys in the Facebook for everybody who's listening at home. If you want to become an elite member and have these phone calls and have us analyze your film like this, go to better at forward slash coaching. We are waiting in the wings for you for my Hamilton fans. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's it. Appreciate your time. Love you guys. Uh, if you guys are in the meeting, please leave your browsers open so that it can upload from you and we get your streams until it says complete and then you can kick out. All right. From all of us at Better at Beach and Matt, you want to sign us off? Let's get better. Holla. Boop, boop, boop.